Hi everyone, this is Mr. Dawson. I'm recording this video in order to help you understand source reliability and an idea called author bias. These are two ideas that will help you when researching your topic for the personal inquiry project. So first thing, as you watch, make sure you have your personal inquiry project packet open to the source reliability and author bias page. It looks a little bit like this. In fact, it looks exactly like this. So as you watch the video, you'll be able to pause and take some notes where uh, you find appropriate. And you can always rewind if you need to hear something I said again, or if you need to read something over. Okay, so we'll get started. The first thing we're going to talk about is initial markers. These are the first things you can look for when you're researching that will tell you if a site is good, bad, or in between. So the first thing that you should notice is some information about the sponsoring organization or the author. You can look at the bottom of the web page. There might be a name there or there might be an institution, like the name of a college or of a company. So this bullet here is important. If nobody's name is there, you need to be a little bit skeptical. You also need to worry about there's potential author bias. So let's give, I'll give you an example. I'm going to do a little Google search for my personal inquiry project, which is going to be about Brooklyn, New York. So I'm just going to type information about Brooklyn, New York. So I'm going to go to this website here, Visit Brooklyn. I see here that the Brooklyn Tourism and Visitor Center has sponsored this website. So there's an institution that sponsored it. The second marker is timeliness, which just means how new or old is the information here. So does the site tell you when it was last updated or edited? Is it very long ago or is there no date at all? Both can be red flags that the website is not reliable or does not contain valuable information. Here's another site I found when searching for Brooklyn. We see that this one is from about.com. If I scroll to the bottom, there's really no institution or person except for this here, about.com. And we have this general date, copyright 2014. So I can't be too certain that this information is reliable because there's no specific date for when the information is updated. So some things in Brooklyn or about Brooklyn may have changed. The third initial marker is links to source material. So if you are looking for specific facts and you want to know where this website found those facts, often they'll, they'll link their information to other websites, articles, or books that provided that information. And surprisingly, Wikipedia is often very good at providing this type of information. So I'm going to do another Google search here. And let's go to the Wikipedia page. Now you don't always want to use Wikipedia as, a, as your direct source. However, it is good to use to do some quick reading. And if we scroll to the bottom, This is a very long Wikipedia page. Find some other references. So you can see there are 88 citations that this website has used. So this was not one person who just typed out all this information about Brooklyn. They used 88 different books, uh, websites. Here's information from the census. Um, there may be specific articles or even interviews. So this while we're not always sure about Wikipedia, this is a pretty good example of a well-cited uh, 
page. Not all websites will be this well cited or linked. Number four, and this is the marker that requires the most thinking on your part, is the overall appearance. appearance. So if the site looks professional and it looks like somebody took care in creating it, it's most likely more reliable than one that doesn't look so, uh, so nice. So I'm going to go back to the two examples I had before. You have this website, about.com. There's advertisements up here. There's advertisements here and here. We see that the text is broken up and there are a lot of confusing links everywhere. So to me, this is not too aesthetically pleasing. However, if we go to the Visit Brooklyn website, even though they're also promoting tourism, they have a much more professional looking page. You can see that all of the useful information is right here in the, in the middle of the page. And they just have one main attraction at the top, a, a series of pictures that are cycling through. So I think this is an example of a well-designed website, and this is not an example of a well-designed website. We can also look at the ending, .gov, .edu, and .org. These, as it says, this is bonus points. These are the best endings to use because this means the information is probably from a reputable organization. Then we also need to worry about errors and advertisements, as I mentioned. So to review, there are the four initial markers. Pause here if you want to review the information or go back. So right now you should have this information filled out. If you don't, again, pause the video and go back to, to take some notes. Next, I'd like you to look at this list. We've discussed some of these ideas already. I'd like you to take a moment to think about what other information could be a good sign about a website and what might be a bad sign. So again, pause here and do that on your own. When you're finished, you can go to this next page. Corroborate is a, a simple word, but it's very important. It just means to confirm or verify. So find another place that has confirmed your information. This is important to do when researching. The last part we'll talk about today is author bias. This just means when an author favors one side instead of another. So whether the author is a person or if the information is presented by a company or organization, it's probably going to be biased in some way, either intentionally or unintentionally. So right now you should have this, this notes filled out. You should have done this part on your own, and you should be working on this part here. So you can pause the video here and try to think of two websites or two sources that could be biased. This might require a little bit of your own research. And last, here are a couple ways that you can detect author bias. I'm going to allow you to read these on your own. Uh, fill in the notes on your paper and try to think of one or two other ways that you might be able to detect author bias. Okay, everyone. So that was a little information to help you with source reliability and author bias. And remember that you should have completed all of the notes on those pages that I showed on the screen. And this way, when we research in class, you'll be ready to research with from an informed perspective instead of uh, believing everything that you read all right thanks for watching and for listening and see you in class